All right, let's bang this out. Sun's going down. It's gonna get cold. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. You may have seen my recent video about mayflies. It was super awesome. Well, today we'll continue down the EPT index and talk about Plecoptera, or as you might know them, stoneflies. Before we get into the life cycle, let's go over some general stonefly stuff. Stoneflies can be identified by their flat wings. They lay like this over their back. Mayflies are sailboats, caddisflies are tents, and stoneflies are flat. Stoneflies need clean, cold water even more so than mayflies and caddisflies. You'll find them in the most pristine rivers and they'll be more concentrated in sections of those rivers that have deep, fast water like canyons. A lot of stoneflies get pretty big, like two or three inches long. That's a pretty good meal for a trout. What's better to eat, a thousand midges or one stonefly? The answer is that there is nothing good about midges ever. Despite having fly in their name, stoneflies suck at flying. They're slow, not agile, and crash land all the time. If you get hit in the back of the head by a bug, stonefly. Most stoneflies are known for hatching in the springtime. Pre runoff, depending on where you live, you might see some squalas. A couple of months later, getting into early summer, you'll see golden stones and maybe some salmon flies. Those are kind of the premier stonefly hatches. But through the summer, you'll get yellow sallies hatching like every day. And if you're a psychopath that fishes for trout in winter, you're probably familiar with these itty bitty winter black stoneflies. About the size of a midge, but not so nerdy. Okay, let's do the life cycle. It's pretty similar to mayflies, but there are some key differences. Stonefly larvae, or nymphs, hatch from an egg underwater. The nymphs will live down there in and under the rocks. Remember interstitial spaces from the mayfly video? They'll go through several phases of what are called instars. That just means they're shedding their exoskeleton and getting a little bigger each time, and I like fancy words. After two or three years as a nymph, it's time to grow up and get a real job and become an adult. Now you might remember that mayflies swim up to to the water surface when they hatch. Stoneflies don't do that. They crawl out to the bank and then up on some rocks or bushes to hatch. If you're super smart like me, you might figure out that during a stonefly hatch, fishing nymphs in shallow water close to shore might be a good idea. So the nymph crawls out of the water and finds a place to chill. It dries out a little bit and sheds its nymph skin or shuck and becomes an adult. Physically, but maybe not mentally. I'm sure you can relate. You Usually this metamorphosis will happen in the morning. Then in the heat of the afternoon, the adult stonefly will take off into the air to fulfill its life mission, making more stoneflies. The adults will swarm over the river, find a mate, and then go back to the willow bushes for some privacy. If you paid attention to what I just said, and if you're smart, like me, you probably figured out that during a stonefly hatch, it's a good idea to fish nymphs in the morning and then dries in the afternoon after the big bugs start flying around. Since you watched my mayfly video, you know that adult mayflies live for one day. Stoneflies are different. They might live a few days if they don't get eaten by a bird or just fly straight into the water. They'll hatch one morning, fly in the afternoon, then spend the night in some willows, then fly again the next afternoon. Two or three days of that and they're done. They're dead. Like mayflies, the female stonefly will lay her eggs by dipping her butt in the water. It's like a stonefly bidet and it starts the cycle over again. So that's the basics of stoneflies, but let's take a second and talk about what I see as the archetypal stonefly, Terranarsis californica, the salmon fly, bunion bug stonefly number two. I don't really have much to say about them, I just think they're neat. They are giant and fish love to eat them. Experiencing a thick stonefly hatch in a canyon when the fish are really on them is one of the pinnacles of fly fishing. If you were on my multi-day raft trip that I hosted last year, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't done a good salmon fly hatch yet, I highly recommend you seek it out. Looking up between the canyon walls and seeing thousands of salmon flies doing salmon fly stuff like they've been doing for 250 million years is way cool. Just don't forget to look down at your dry fly or you'll miss that eat. And that's it. That's gonna do it. Thank you as always for watching another one of my huge fly fisherman videos. I'll be back as soon as I can with another huge fly fisherman video for you. Until then, practice your Latin and stay huge.
They're called salmon flies because of the color of their abdomens, not because salmon eat them. <laughs>